The whole, the whole world is talking about it, of course, this tragedy in Texas. Trying to wrap our heads around what happened yesterday at that elementary school in Texas. The 18-year-old gunman went from, he started with a domestic dispute with his grandmother. Right. Then drove, I believe it sounds like he had a crash, a car crash, then immediately got out of the car and went straight for Rob Elementary School. And he went from classroom to classroom inside that school. And at one point barricaded himself inside of a classroom. And the students and the teacher who were in there, um, they had no way out. Yeah, you know, these are just a few of the pictures that we should, because there's 21 people that died. But they're still working to identify the victims exactly. and make contact with families. And so at this point, these are the only pictures we have, but we will continue to update these photos because we want to honor all of the lives that were lost, including mm -hmm. the teacher as well as the staff member. So these would have been second graders, third graders, and fourth graders. Thank you for coming in, by the way. Uh, Kevin Bethel, of course. The chief, chief of, school. of uh, school security for the District of uh, Philadelphia, School District of Philadelphia. Aye, aye, aye. I mean, so many oh. people had reactions to what happened yesterday, but I'm sure, as someone who's a chief security officer, you, you probably have a different perspective. What was your reaction to seeing this news? It's just a tragedy. I mean, it's what, you know, even when I'm in my policing spaces, the things that keep you up at night is your fear that, you know, because of these soft targets that someone would come into schools and, and do harm to our children uh, in this manner. Um, and it's, it's difficult. You, you know, I found myself, you know, in this place last night, you know, so you got emotional this morning, yeah. and both of you, and it's our children. You know, it's hard to believe that your child would go to school and not come home because some uh, person who, who, you know, who obviously has some kind of mental issue and other issues uh, would we'll be able to get a, a weapon uh, of this caliber and go into our school and, and, and do this to our children. Yeah, I mean, you think nobody, nobody should die like this. But it is, there's something different when you hear like a, a five-year-old kid is, you know, killed by a bullet. And, and, and what folks don't understand is, I mean, these, these, these assault weapons, you know, I mean, they're killers, right? I mean, the, the, the carnage that these weapons do, you know, the speed at which these uh, bullets travel, are meant to destroy. Yeah, I don't and, know and how so, long this took, but probably not very much time no, at all. I mean, you know, most of these incidents happen with less than four minutes. And, yeah. and, and so um, it's, just, it's just a tragedy, and, and, and it just really shows you, you know, this weapon, you know, it, it, is, it is really representing um, some very difficult, you know, issues for us. And when you think about how to stop these things, I mean, the interesting thing is there was a school resource officer um, there. Yeah. Um, the officers and the you know troopers were able to get there pretty quickly, and they had trouble getting in because he was firing at them as they were trying to enter the school to help. Yeah, I mean, and that's that's the conversation, right? That's the conversation's been had. You know, we, we constantly talk about adding more policing, but at the end of the day, you know, when you come up against that kind of weaponry and, and a person has a, a, a vest and, and it makes it very uh, difficult to repel uh, that that person coming into that space. So. So it's a challenge. So what you try to do is, you know, is to, to create those different layers of approach that we are at the yeah. school district uh, try to do uh, to, to thwart this. But it, it does show uh, the real true challenge. I mean, just recently what, in the supermarket, walking into our churches, wow. Wow. Yeah. you know, Vegas out at, at, a, at an outdoor uh, an event. I mean, it, it, it is a significant challenge. And, How many... And, uh, um, Lockdowns have we had in the school district of Philadelphia? Let's say since the start of school, that'd be September. Yeah, we've done close to 65 lockdowns. Lockdown, and, and 65. Yeah, but the lockdowns are in a different. We've had those conversations earlier on the on the show. I mean, yeah, because we have so much violence around our schools and shooting incidences, and so working in, in partnership with the police department, which is phenomenal. I mean, we do have a process when something's happening around the school, i.e., whether it be a, a gun or potentially the police is chasing someone. They will immediately notify our dispatch. We'll immediately no notify the school. And what we'll do is the school will continue to maintain its operation inside, but we will lock the doors, no one in and no one out. And so we, we believe that is a, a one additional barrier that we have that when something's happening around our schools, we do not wait and delay. We will put the school into a lockdown process. They'll continue to move through and the classrooms. Philly police Philly, immediately Philly, respond? Well, they may be responding to something in the area. So there may right. be something happening down the block, or they may be involved in a, a foot pursuit or something that they think potentially that person could run I into our schools. Do we have armed guards in our schools? No, no, our, no. our men and women, our school safety officers are, are unarmed. Mm -hmm. uh, but that layer approach, but the police department dedicates a, a significant number of men and women. Do you think who, they should be armed? Not, not, not. The, the model we have works. I mean, we have a, a first barrier is, is, is really our men and women inside the school, supported by the Philadelphia Police Department, who are ready to respond within minutes to the school. 
I, I don't think we're in that position now. I mean, if yeah. we're talking about arming, putting armed officers across the entire United States in every uh, elementary school and soft target in the nation, I, I think that's an, an awesome task that, that may not be able to be yeah, met. Yeah. Was there something that's going to be um, done today um, in response to this, you know, just in case as an extra precaution? Yeah, I, I immediately called Commissioner Dales, Joe Dales, last night. We had a long conversation around our deployment today. So the Philadelphia Police Department will be providing them a list. We have about, you know, uh, I won't get into the number of elementary schools that are not covered by safety officers. So, we're, you know, the police department will step in now and start to enhance their security checks of that, bringing in additional staff, my men and women on overtime, my overnight and, and middle shift personnel to come in to start to make those checks at those schools. I mean, it's going to be a difficult day for our school leaders, our school, our parents, our children. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, it's a traumatic incident, and, and we can't discard the impact it has and the ripple it has. The fear, I've often said the fear of crime is just as bad as the incident. And across the nation, yeah. what you're going to see is that fear and how it, how it impacts kids, our school leaders. The kids know about what happened in Texas. Absolutely. They, here in Philadelphia, they know what happened. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and, and, and we need to make sure we're talking to them. It's, 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 uh, we're near the school at the end of the year, school year. I mean, this incident happened, I think the school year was about to end this week. I know, right. yeah. uh, two days. And, and, two days. And so, um, but we really need to focus on this, this weapon. I mean, at this point, there's an issue of what we're doing around prevention and intervention and, and working through our threat assessments to go you know, actively address those. But the weapon is, is the killing machine, and, and we've seen this all too often now. Uh, that you know, we need to say, what are we going to do about a weapon of this level mm -hmm. that creates this level of, of carnage and, and, and destruction uh, used so repeatedly quickly. now? Yeah. Um, it, and when it comes to threats, um, how many th uh, threat investigations? I know we have a system here in, mm -hmm. at our schools in Philadelphia. Yeah. How many yeah. of you have been investigated? Here yeah, so far. yeah. So we've done over 115 incidents. Is where, and some of them are just low level. But one of the things that the state had mandated that you have you institute these threat assessment protocols. We immediately took that action even you before never that. Know. You never know. So we treat every incident. So luckily, working in collaboration with our school leaders, our parents, uh, other students. We once what we what a threat uh, assessment. What, what could it be like? Somebody talking bad on social well, media? Well, we were really targeting the gun violence. So so on 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 a video or social media, a kid may have a gun. And, and the child is showing, it, showing off, it off and saying, hey, this kid said he has a gun. Oftentimes those parents will call us, will engage. The police department has been phenomenal. When, and, you know, we'll go through a process. Some are just transient threats. But we, for some, we, we engage the Philadelphia Police Department to go to the homes to talk to those parents. Yeah. They do searches of those homes to see if those weapons are there. Because every time we have these instances, there's always someone who comes warning forward signs. saying, yeah, there was a warning yeah, sign, we, or we heard him talk like this. Or. Yeah, we take a very, very proactive yeah. approach in those warning signs, uh, working with our schools and our school leaders and, and school good. community to do that. This does keep you up at night, doesn't it? And it's, it's, it doesn't, yeah. I mean, it, it's really, really difficult to wake up in the morning and see us lost these children yeah. and, and and even when we look at the children we lose across the city and other conversations we've had um, we really need to take a wake up as a, as a community and as a, yeah. as a society and understand them. seeing this hearing this it is affecting our yeah. kids thank you right, thank, thank you, you both right back mm -hmm.